The Canadian men's national team, they're in camp already. Gentlemen, they're getting set for their two CONCACAF Nations League games. Uh, here's a look at the roster that was called in already a change when it comes to defenders. Kyle Hebert of St. Louis, who, by the way, has made MLS history, becoming the first expansion side to win their first four. He gets called in to replace Kamal Miller, who is injured. Kamal Miller with CF Montreal. He will not be available for those two games. So great that we're going to see Hebert, center back. What could he do? Jordo, this was a conversation we were having on One Nation uh, just yesterday as well when it comes to the squad where some of our concerns are and that center back position for you, for me, we had Jimmy Brennan as a guest on the show. He seemed to agree with that. So let's go through this roster um, a little bit here. And why don't we start, let's go position by position. So we'll go from the back. We'll move our way forward here. Ollie is Milan Borian still the number one keeper for you. I think coming into this year, yes, he is. But I think it's more of an open question. Um, you know, going mm. through qualifying for, for 2022, I think Boyan, he was obviously spectacular during qualifying. And so that gave him deserved runway to be the number one, to know he was going to be the number one going into Qatar. No real questions, no real debate. You want to keep consistency back there and, and have one of your biggest leaders, um, obviously, at the core of, the, of that defense. I think coming into a new year now, that that maybe is a bit more of an open question, like I said. Um, we've got two tournaments, hopefully, this summer. If they make it to Nations League finals, I wonder if Herdman will maybe split the two. Boyan will get one. Another goalkeeper will get the other one. Um, and I think if there's a feeling that Dane Sinclair is playing really well or Max Crapeau comes back and is in top form, like I, th I think it could be more there for the taking, uh, more there for competition than it has been over the past couple of years. But for now, I, I certainly think Boyan is, is the incumbent and gets the, the opportunity to keep the job. I think in a group, Andy, um, it's all about managing who's the star and who's the up and coming star and keeping everyone happy. And that's a balancing act. I think when you look at Boyan, people say he's old. You know, probably I asked you the first time I met you, like, uh, who's one of your favorite players? And Buffon obviously has to stand out. But homeboy was like, what, 41 and still going at it? <laughs> Boyan's 35. Really? It's really just about your mindset. I think a keeper is one of those positions where an age shouldn't be attached to it. It's really just about performance and, and his mindset. When I look at Boyan and I look at um, the CONCACAF run uh, 2022, one of the best players, most outstanding. I would say going into the World Cup, that he, looking at his performance, he should have an itch to probably want to get back there or be a top keeper for the next few years. Now, we're talking about a space of three and a half years. So much could happen. Dane St. Clair could be a phenomenal keeper. Max Krupo could come in and just say, this is mine. There's so many things that happen, but I, I feel remiss if I write Boyan off just because of the performances that he's put up for Canada and his longevity. And I think that if you really take in a couple of years and if he really like digs into his role, I couldn't see him being the starting keeper for the next little bit. Yeah, I think uh, Cripo, that's obviously a devastating one, as, as we know, the broken leg in MLS final. And I don't know if he'd even be back for CONCACAF Nations League for final, sure. right? Because that's going to be in June. And I feel like he's eyeing a return in June, July. Um, but I mean, for I get... I completely agree, Jordo. I mean, if somebody is still performing, you go with who's performing. Ageism should not play a factor here, right? If you're the guy, if you're the, you're the guy um, and, and you're still a factor and you're still making great saves and you can get up after diving for a ball and not go, oh, I mean, maybe after he does that in the dressing room, that's fine. But as long as you're not doing that on the pitch. But, but having said that, uh, I think we have to be also very realistic about 2026, and you know that John Herdman right. is obviously going to be wanting to try some guys. And I wonder if, you know, Dane St. Clair at some point, Cripo coming back in, maybe not in that summer window either for the CONCACAF Nations League final gold cup. Mm, I don't know. Right. We'll see. But uh, I think at some point we'll, we'll start to see a transition. Uh, just don't know when, because to your point, Borian in some ways is still looking good. Let's look at uh, who's in front of him in the back line. And Ollie, would you say that's their weakest? position that back line going into the summer yeah probably still is and I, I think you, you touched on it there Andy like this it's going to be a really difficult transition for John Herdman to manage because he does have to think about 2026 when players like Boyan, Vittoria, Hutchinson are probably unlikely to be the starters maybe Boyan more so, more likely than the other two um, but in in terms of the runway to that tournament like there's not a whole lot of opportunity for him to blood new players right like mm -hmm. you've got 
Nations League in, in right now in, in 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 terms of qualifying for, for the summer finals, keeping your your ranking in Copa America. You've got the Nations League finals in the summer. You've got Gold Cup. You've got even the September October friendlies. Like they want to get top opponents in in those two two months, right? Where they're testing their best players against you know some of the best teams in the world. Then you've got Copa America next year. So there's not a whole lot of opportunities to actually try new players here. Mm-hmm. Um, those changes and how he manages that, I think, is going to be a real challenge. So I, I look at the defense and. I just don't see a bunch of guys right now. Maybe this will change over the next year with players like Hebert emerging. I don't see a bunch of guys knocking on the door to to replace Steven Vittoria or, or, or players like that uh, at this moment in, in time. So I think it will probably be quite consistent for now. Um, this is a group that's shown certainly in CONCACAF competition. They can be one of the top top defensive units on the world stage. Maybe it's a bit tougher and maybe that's where you know the, the, the need for upgrades gets found out a little bit. But for now, I think it might be quite similar to, to what we've seen over the past year or two. Yeah. I think uh, as well, Ollie and Andy, that playing center back, for me, that position is just, uh, you have to do a lot. A lot of dirty work, but it's, it's a very personality position. And what I mean by that is you have to be a person to like move people on, solve situations, and be consistent and do the dirty work for a long time to get noticed. Now, I'll also add, I've literally been telling my son, you're going to be a center back because <laughs> this is a nice pathway to play. You always need, especially if you're if you're left footed or whatever it is, you literally have a spot on a roster. If you have personality, you defend well, and like you're you're mobile. Like it's a it's a perfect way. And everyone has a kid, hey, I want to be a striker, I want to be a nine, I want to be a 10, I want to be a seven, I want to do this. Cool. Hmm. center back that is a stable position you know the weekend and week out you could be playing if you do your part so i don't want to get caught up in oh this is canada's weak spot this is their achilles heel i just think that most players if you have we talked about it on one nation with jimmy yesterday uh andy it's just like having that player that like has their chest up and is ready to defend and ready to solve problems is just difficult there aren't just a plethora of center backs in the world yeah. that are just like, hey, I'm ready to play in that season. Mm-hmm. Some might be young, some might need more time. But for me, this is an area right there that that if I'm a Dom Zator or a Hebert, I'm going into this saying, man, I play well. I, I play with personality. I play with my, my chest high and my head up. I could easily be in the squad for the next three years and go to a World Cup and play. Like this is a this is the position for me that a lot could happen in. Well, Jimmy put his managerial hat on as well yesterday and <laughs> said, why don't you try Alistair Johnson as a center back? Ah, yeah. I don't know. I mean, you could. I, you got sure out you of could. Kobe and I, you have Richie Larea. So would you try him? I don't know. I think, um, yeah, I, I think they, they will try him definitely in a, in a three, which obviously he's already kind of played to an extent. Mm-hmm. And that what that gives you a solution, which I think they wanted to try at the end of last year, but then he obviously got his injury which is maybe Scott Kennedy being the successor to Vittoria. Um, you know, it's kind of awkward mm-hmm. to have two left footers in there, but if you have Kennedy in the middle and Johnston to his right, maybe that, that works a little bit better with obviously someone like Kamal Miller completing that back three. So that would be something I wouldn't be too surprised to see. Yeah. And also like what, what can Derek Cornelius do a lot that we're going to see here, but I think the fact that we're having this conversation and mentioning all these names tells us that we're not completely satisfied either right in in what we're seeing and that there's still some work for Herdman to do when it comes to the back four back three whatever formation he's going to play as we move to the middle of the field Jordan is now the time for Ismail Kone to replace Atiba Hutchinson I keep talking about replacing absolutely not (laughs) oh absolutely not I don't think anyone could replace Atiba Hutchinson for what he's done for the for the, for the, for the okay, country, not philosophically. The not no, philosophically. I'll, get in, I'll get into it, Jules. I, like, you know me. I'm never going to be like, throw you under the bus with, with a right. question or whatever. An answer. I will say this. Ideal world is having a Tiba. If he's in the mind space, right? Same with Borean. It's like, it's not about age. It's if he's still up for it. It's still up for the travel, getting maybe minutes cut if his body feels right. But having someone like a Tiba Hutchinson leaving you know it's inevitable that at a point he's going to be playing his last game in the red and white but having a guy like that being a big brother to Ismail Kone takes his game up here so 
if they're playing in the middle together for a little bit or at training or whatever it is, I know all eyes are on Ishmael Kone. He's still so young and, and, and still a kid, but that doesn't mean anything in the world of football, right? You could still perform at 20 and obviously you see Atiba performing at 40. But what I'm saying is it would be nice to have Atiba's wisdom and he's tried and true and all the years of playing all the different countries, different systems, kind of being a big brother to Ishmael Kone and, 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 and telling him the ways that in which he could just really take off in his career. So you have one leaving inevitably and one coming in. I would love for them to just merge together and get the most out of each other for this time. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And I, I think, look, Atiba's got a role as long as he wants one. I think we, we, we all, you know, feel the same way about him as a player and, and as a person. But again, when we talk about this transition that's happening, it's easy to say, well, this guy's getting a bit old, so let's toss him out of the team. But the other question is, who is the replacement, right? Like, who's actually coming in who's going to be better? This is the one area where I think in Ismail Kone, you've got a guy who is ready. Like, there, there, there's a, a player who is exceptional in terms of young players in this squad who is ready for that transition to happen. Um, Atiba hasn't played a ton in 2023 since mm -hmm. the World Cup for his club. We, we know, obviously, there's been you know, a really horrible situation in Turkey. And, and then also he's had his own, I think, fitness issues to, to deal with. So there's some circumstances that have led to that. But the reality is he hasn't played a lot for his club in 2023. Kone is playing regularly for Watford. He's just come off two 90s back to back coming into this window. Like, I, I think this kid is is ready to, to not just kind of have some minutes off the bench for Canada anymore. He's ready to join Davies, David, Eustachio, Laren, Buchanan as like part of the core of this team. Uh, this is the one position where I think we could see a significant change pretty quickly here. And, and I think it will be a smell Kone coming in. Yeah. And what's we also, sorry, I was going to say what speaks to also just the federations. And this is what makes soccer so tricky is to your point, Jordan, like Atiba looked fantastic during qualifiers. He did not look like he was getting up there. He had speed, the way he would track the ball, the way, I mean, when he scored that goal as well in, in Hamilton, like it was hilarious because the way he was just able to get into the play and have a dash. Yeah, yeah. Head bum, whatever he ended up scoring <laughs> off of like, Shit. but he looked good in CONCACAF. Yeah. yeah. And then he went to the world cup and you have like European, African, South American like competition. And he just looks different. Uh, and and yeah. then I wonder like, that's where his age showed not in CONCACAF, but in a different kind type of competition you might want to call it elevated competition i'm just going to call it different type of competition so that goes back to what john herdman has to think about what works in Concacaf, sure because you got to get the job done in your federation but inevitably the whole goal here is you know getting those those prime minutes and that prime experience in that in copa america and then of course the 2026 world cup right mm -hmm. who's yeah. going to perform on a world stage i think specifically with a with a tiba it's just like CONCACAF, he was fit and he felt nice. I think going into the World Cup, it yeah. was just, we were talking, like, it's just, he wasn't healthy. Mm -hmm. But he was still a guy that you can't really take off of a game sheet. Like, you could, but, like, who was his replacement? Like, with his, that experience, I, for me, I'm going to die and live with my captain on the pitch. And then also to add to that, not him, even him just being captain, but the player that has played so many minutes. Like, look at the, look at the countries and players that Tiba has played with. Like, I can't see a Canadian side if he's even 70% not having him play. So I think it was unlucky having him unfit going into that, that the biggest tournament, the biggest stage of, of mm. Canadian history. But yeah, right. if he's a guy who's sharp, he, he's playing, in my opinion. All right. So we're moving along now. We're at the top. So I've already mentioned Kyle Hebert got the call in, gentlemen. Already confirmation on Kamal Miller not being able to play in the two games because of injury. It is worth noting, at least for the first game, Alistair Johnston still has to serve a suspension. I picked mm -hmm. up a red card last time. So remember, Alistair Johnston, game one of this CONCACAF Nations League, will not be in the lineup. And as we move forward, your boy that you were very excited about, Jordo, just a couple days ago, Tijan Buchanan, was subbed out of a game against Club Bruges. Looked like he was clutching his hamstring. We haven't heard anything yet, at least as of the taping of this show, if he will have to drop out. Um, but so far, you know, he has been called into camp. But as we look at the forward position, Davies, David, Laren, all in top form with their clubs. All right, Ollie, how do you, how do you figure that out? If you're Herdman, <laughs> fig, figure it out. Figure it out. How, how do you do Let's it? How do you play? Ollie. 
yeah i i don't know um B buchanan buchanan it looks like he's traveling i'm not sure if there's still something he's dealing with but that's good news obviously like what i'll say is i thought there was something really interesting or a couple of things really interesting um in the news in european soccer this week one was sejon buchanan being linked with inter milan a club who plays Ooh. the same system all the time with wing backs and that was that would be where mm. he would be be bought to play i think at right wing back and then there was also a story about how julian nagelsman at bayern um, is committed to playing with a, th a, a three-back system with wing-backs in the, in the long term at Bayern Munich, which means Alfonso <laughs> Davies is going to be playing as a left wing-back, obviously. If, if that becomes reality, if you have Buchanan playing right wing-back at Inter and Davies playing left wing-back at Bayern Munich, the tactical discussion is over. Like, you just replicate that with the national team. Over. It, like, if they're doing it's that every over. week with their club... <laughs> Get this you, thing you out of my way. <laughs> it's tough with wires. <laughs> Uh, if they're doing that with their club, <laughs> you just you just do, do it with the national team as well. I'm gonna just plow. Sorry, on Ali. Sorry. Um, and and you work around it, right? So whether that's obviously playing three at the back, I think suits Canada. You know, you you stack your plugs in easily. Jonathan David, I think, is is versatile and can plug in. But to me, if if that becomes the future of where these two guys are playing for their clubs, it's it leads Canada in 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 that direction automatically. Oliver Platini. <laughs> Sheer brilliance from you, brother. Sheer brilliance. <laughs> I never thought you might like you plug it. Also, too, putting the three in the back, right? We always talk about defenders. You can, if you're training that, you can compensate. Two, you really have to have two big boys that are solving problems. Three, it's more just about organizing and, and figuring out how you're going to play in what type of shape. But this is a beautiful thing, having so many options, right? Uh, it, it, for a national team, though, having that, that golden generation, having the Davies, the David, the Lairns, what is it, Larino? What is it? Larin. So, Larin. Larin. Having him, it just, it's just, it's getting the balance right, and it's difficult, right? Uh, that's why I'm also, too, I'm always looking at just play Davies as a left back or left wing back. And there are options going forward. It's just figuring out the, the rest of the pieces. But I'm sure Herdman has uh, solutions, but it's beautiful because he has options. So mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter how he swings it. It's who's in form and who's really ready to bust net and score for, for the red and white. All right. Great uh, chat here. Can't wait to see the men March 25th, March 28th, right here on One Soccer, CONCACAF Nations League, Curacao, Honduras, the teams that they will be taking on.